it's time to play some digital. And I have been on a very cold streak with the Woodland Alliance as well, so hopefully uh, in this game I can, can break out of that. Uh-oh. That is not a good start. Immediate Hammercraft for the Vagabond. And gonna go ahead and explore the ruins and they get what do they get? They get a hammer. Oh my goodness. What is this start? <laughs> that is a very unfortunate start for everyone who is not the adventurer vagabond who is playing the birds by the way. Okay. Just so I know who's who. Yeah, I don't think I've seen three hammers before either. Pretty crazy. And they're already going for the quest. Uh, drawing two cards. And then damaging an item for the sake of improvise and then immediately repairing it. Very good first turn there. So now we have to think about where we want to spread. And one thing to consider is that we want to keep our tokens farther away from the despot if possible. Um, but unfortunately we do have two rabbit supporters which is bad. Um, because we're going to have to choose... We, the only way we can place three supporters is if we go here, right? And what likely happens if we go to these top three is that the Eerie come here, they eat our token for two points, and then we get stuck with one of these two, which is not ideal. If they really want to box us in, cats could take this one and force us into this clearing, which only has two connections. Uh, bad all around, in my opinion. And so I'm not going to be doing that. What I think I am going to do is go on this right side here, because like... The only central clearing I have access to is Texas. That is if I want to place more than one sympathy, I'd have to go here. Likely that cats remove this for defense and likely that birds remove this for a bit of uh, early points. And so that would be very bad for me uh, to start out the game that way. So I think I'm just going to spread down this side and then mobilize my hand so that I can revolt in either clearing. Um, Actually, I might hold one fox card. Yeah, I'll hold the uh, the boot in my hand, I think. Because that way, if the Eerie come down and give me sympathy for this, uh, I won't be going over my five supporter limit. Right, because I'm going to be holding one. If I mobilize two, I'll have three. If the Eerie come in, move in, give me outrage once, and then destroy it, giving me outrage twice, I won't be going over the five supporter limit. And this supporter... Uh, layout that I currently have allows me to revolt in either clearing, which is good. Um, and I'm not going to turn one craft the card, I'm just going to hold it. Uh, don't want them to know what it is, and I don't want to give the Vagabond any more items than they need this early on in the game. Very cool. Yeah, definitely a crazy Vagabond, I would have to agree with that. Go ahead and close that. Um, so, yeah, I'm curious to see how this plays out. Uh, like I said, I don't think I've ever seen a Vagabond get three hammers on the first turn. Uh, lucky for us, this is not the base deck. This is the Exiles and Partisans deck. So, they aren't going to just be crafting favors immediately, at least. Um, but, yeah, still definitely don't appreciate <laughs> what's going on here. Okay. Got a suited recruit coming out from the Eerie. That is unfortunate. I'm going to assume they didn't start with any bird cards. Um, and they're going to craft a bag immediately, which is also a little bit worrisome. Because the adventurer, you know, they, they have this limit right now on items. So if they were to have explored the next two ruins and neither of them were the bag, they'd have to discard one item. Now they can aid the Eerie to ensure that they don't have to do that. Which kind of stinks. Um, I didn't see if they had anything else to agree. They did not. 
let's see, I'm going to say, I think we're going to need a battle in that decree soon-ish if we want a chance stopping adventurer unfortunately i won't be of any help really one of my one of the things i don't really like as much about playing the woodland alliance is that i just can't really influence what's going on on the board um and also where i've placed myself here um was maybe inadvisable in hindsight um, mostly because I can't spread to any of these three mouse clearings still, um, which is really unfortunate. Um, and that might honestly set me back far enough that I can't even... We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, definitely the, the start of the game, it's looking a bit grim. So interesting that they decided to go this way when I guess they wouldn't be able to battle this sympathy. But I wouldn't revolt on them because I need them to battle the adventurer. I would have thought they would come down this way for these mouse clearings since, you know, they put mouse recruit in their decree. But I guess if they if they were thinking I could revolt on them, then that would be a bad idea. We got a dominance in the supply. Yes, we do. Um, and coalitions are legal in the Digital League. Um, so the Vagabond can go for that if they do start falling behind a bit. And it will count as half a win for either player that receives a coalition victory. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to count winning by coalition in... The Iron Man, I think if I'm not playing the Vagabond, I have no control over whether I get Coalition, so it will count. But if I am playing the Vagabond, I'm not personally going to be counting a Coalition attempt as a, or a Coalition win as uh, valid for the Iron Man, so I'm just not going to be attempting them at all. I don't think they are very interesting for the game. And the fan on my laptop is going pretty crazy right now. I hope that isn't too audible. Hope it isn't too loud. We'll have to see after the recording. And yep, they're already aiding the birds for that bag. And I imagine they're just going to walk down into this rabbit clearing and explore there. Yep, here they come. Basically, if they get tea, if they draw tea and craft it like soonish, we're in very, very big trouble. I don't know if I can. Because at a certain point, I'm going to have to worry about just out-racing. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. The cats have already set up martial law here. And I can't even spread past it uh, that quickly on my turn. So now the question is, where do I want to revolt? I have two options available to me. Um, and I think the answer is Fox. Because I have this Fox card in my hand, I can immediately get two officers. Um, and it also cuts the Eerie off from wanting to go down this way, right? They can't just gobble up this clearing for sympathy later in the game. And if they want to get at my other sympathy, they'll have to go through my base uh, and guaranteed give me sympathy. So we're going to revolt here. I think that's a pretty solid plan. And we go ahead and gain the officer and the warrior in that clearing. I have nowhere to spread, unfortunately. But I will just go ahead and immediately train once. And I'm going to mobilize the bird, because birds are always nice to have in the supporters. And then I'm going to recruit twice, defend that base. 
we can worry about organizing after. Yeah, and the other nice thing about this is that I am closer to the martial law clearing to my base, which means I'll be able to more reliably get sympathy into this clearing if I need to later in the game, whereas if my base was down here, then I wouldn't be able to do that as reliably. And what have the birds done here? They did another recruit and a battle. Okay, good, good. Gonna need some damage on that adventurer. Get a few of those items damaged at the start of the game here. A lot of crafting for them, which I don't love, um, but at least if they battle... No, they're defenseless. Never mind. I was going to say at least if they battle, they'll get a hostile relationship with the adventurer, but they won't because unfortunately the adventurer does not have a sword at the moment. So they'll still be able to aid them for two points when they come out of the forest, if this even sends them to the forest, right? They're going to get the extra hit from defenseless, but they could still very well roll poorly. They only have one battle. Adventurer might have an ambush here. Then they'd have to weigh... Okay, they don't. Oof, good. Four hits. Very nice. So now they've got to decide which items they want to damage. They're just going to use their three hammers next turn to repair all of their items. Wait a minute. Are they over? They're over the limit now. Oh, that's good. I would have damaged probably one of the hammers. I don't know what, what would be worth it. No, because if you repair the bag, you can still hold eight items. And there's another bag in the supply to craft. Yeah, I think that's probably what I would have done too, after giving it a bit more thought. I did draw false orders. Um, I'm tempted to craft that for, or to, to train that for another officer, but false orders is a very good card to have crafted as well. Um, so I think I'm just going to craft it. And I can spread into this clearing. Um, there's no more martial law there, but I don't want Eerie just battling it for an easy point. Although they probably wouldn't anyway, right? Because they know that the adventurer has just basically going to be healing off all that damage with their hammers, so they're going to need to battle them again. The other problem is adventurer is just going to run away, right? They can slip and then boot, and they can pretty much reliably get away from the Eerie uh, on their next turn. Cats have a lot of cardboard over in that leftmost clearing already. They're going to be spending that wood, but two buildings in the same clearing, only defended by one warrior. The Eerie is going to make their way over there eventually. I imagine by then they'll have it more protected, though. They're going to go for another sawmill here. Hopefully they don't reinforce that clearing, because that's where I'm hoping to spread. They probably will destroy that sympathy and give me another supporter in return for that, which will be nice. I think I'm going to craft the false orders, though. It's tough, right? Because I, I need more supporters to spread. But now I'm drawing two cards per turn. False Orders is a great card to have. Can enable a lot of cool scenarios for the Woodland Alliance. Now what the heck, I think I'm just going to craft it. Just go ahead and craft False Orders. Yeah, let me go ahead and craft it. Alright. So the cats... Um, they went for three sawmills before three recruiters, so they still are only drawing that one card per turn. I usually prioritize the third recruiter, but um, I can't really... I haven't tried other strategies very often, so I can't really speak to how much of an impact it's going to make. Obviously, you're, you're just having one turn with fewer card draw, but you get that one extra wood. So I'm curious to see how it, how it goes, how it works out. They're going back into Eerie territory. Um, interesting. Running away from where the ruins are. I guess they've decided they don't need the boot or sword. Um, if they'd never get the sword, that would be good because then they always get defenseless damage. Um, and then if Eerie ever gets a second battle in their decree, they can remove or they can deal with more hits than the adventurer will be able to repair off. Okay, interesting. So, they repaired one bag. Oh, they, right, they don't have to discard it to the end of their turn. Yeah, of course that's the play then. What am I saying? Yeah, always, always, that was the correct items to damage. Gosh, I haven't played the Vagabond in a while. 
um, outside of like async digital games. Um, been streaming tabletop root with my friends and a lot of the, well actually like three of our last five games i think the vagabond was available in the draft but all three of those times were scoundrel which is insane um the odds of it being scoundrel every time the vagabond being drawn are one ninth to the third i guess so you know pretty low um Yeah, so I, I haven't picked the Scoundrel, obviously, because, you know, we're playing to win. I'm not going to pick the Scoundrel. Um, so, yeah, I haven't played the Vagabond in a while. I think we've we've played more than 20 games now. I think I've only played the Vagabond in one of them. Can't say I really miss them, but um, if it's like a fun Vagabond, like the Vagrant or the Adventurer, I tend to find those... Vagabond's fun. I tend to find the swordless Vagabonds that aren't the Scoundrel fun, because I think the Scoundrel's just too hard to win with when when everyone's, like, you know, taking the game relatively seriously, and then whenever they want, they just beat you up, and you just can't keep pace with how slow your scoring is. Okay, so they've... They're redoing their turn here. I think they're going to go get the Ruin... Right, that's what they did. Yeah, they undid. Oh, there goes that timer. Ticking away. When I play live games, I tend to want to set it to no turn timer, so just set it up as an asynchronous game, um, but then play it like a live game so that the timer doesn't go off, and, and it can be a little little stressful having the timer ticking while you're taking your turn but uh, I can see both sides um, maybe maybe everyone not everyone playing has you know the time to sit through a game where some people take very very long to think through their turns um, I I'm usually not one of those people, unless I'm playing with my friends, in which case we all take a very, very, very long time. Okay, Revolt. Hmm. Hmm. This is interesting, right? Because I have the opportunity to get three cards per turn drawn, and I can just start throwing them into supporters, and I'll have three officers. I'll be able to defend this base fairly well, but the problem is the bases are right next to each other. I don't really love that about the base layout. If I was able to get a base here, I might enjoy it a bit more. Um, but I imagine the cats will just destroy that. I feel like I'm easy to pen into this corner if I, you know, hang my hat on this second base here so early in the game. So I think... I'm going to pass on it, because I can always do it next turn, right? Because I'm going to be mobilizing that. Saboteurs haven't seen. There haven't been any persistent crafts, have there? Oh, I forgot I can go like this. Yeah, there haven't been, so... I think I'm going to craft false orders. And then I'm going to mobilize Sabo. And then for my evening actions, can move once, get that in position for an organize, and then I can recruit once again. Yeah, I think that's what my turn will be. And then next turn. If I don't really... If the cats remove this, I think next turn I'll probably just... Oh, it's tough, right? I don't know. We'll, we'll just see. I'm going to end my turn. We'll just see what happens. Ooh. Master Engravers is good to craft this early on. The problem is... The Adventurer is going to be crafting a lot of these items out of the supply before we even get a chance at them. So... Well, 
so I'm not really sure um, if it's worth it, right? Because it also requires both of our mouse sympathy being untouched for at least two turns because I'm going to need to organize that one. So I don't know how likely it is that that actually happens. I probably do revolt though and just start drawing the extra cards. I probably should have just done it last turn. Oh well. It's okay. I just don't I don't like it being there. But this is this is probably the best I could have realistically gotten. Okay, now the birds are going to have two different suits for recruiting in their decree. Which makes them, it would make them easy to turmoil if there were any factions that, like, are gonna turmoil them, right? Because Adventurer doesn't have any swords at the moment. They didn't even explore the runes. I don't think they, like, are particularly looking to get the sword, right? Not until at least they find one they can craft. So for now, this decree is actually fairly safe. I'm just thinking it might come back to bite them in a few turns. I hope they battle the Adventurer again. Yeah, I hope they battle the adventurer again. <sighs> I could move cats into my clearing before my revolt now to trigger more sympathy, more outrage, but I don't think that's necessary. And I don't see the adventurer coming over to my sort of area of the board for most of the game, so it's not like I'm going to be able to get the adventurer with a with a revolt and damage three other items. And even if I do, they just use three hammers to repair all those items. I don't know if I should have gone for a different opening with the alliance. It's a shame that it was two bunny supporters, right? Because I didn't want to get trapped in the top bunny by spreading all three. And then going for like here, here would have pretty much been the same. Except the birds probably would have taken this sympathy. Although I, I, I had no way of knowing the bird's hand. Knowing their hand now, they probably wouldn't have done that. But at the time, I was thinking they're probably just going to throw a card in battle and, and take those easy two points. So it's tricky. But... I can't help but think the position I'm in is not all that good. Alright, so... Oh, wow, they are... They are really redoing. With time ticking down as well. So what did they just take a, a bird out of move? Yeah. You probably don't need that there. They're going to craft it instead. Okay, that's, that's a nice little movement option. Alright, they gotta make this turn quickly now, though. Gotta take another one at that mouse roost. And then probably the lower bunny roost. Yep. So they gotta move and build. Wonder where. Okay, nice. They're gonna hit the adventurer again, I imagine. Since they, yep, remove the damage from all their items, and they'll take only two hits this time, which is a bit of a shame, but we need to damage them. It's very nice that the adventurer can't remove any of your birds back, because the despot doesn't recruit very many at the start of the game. They do now, but they have a weak decree as a result, right? Okay, that's a good turn for us. I'm just worried about our scoring being able to keep pace with us being stuck in this corner of the board. Well, wait, I don't even remember what card that was. Oh, it was Master Engravers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that would have made the decision easy for us. And good thing they didn't take the bird card, because we wouldn't be getting that back. So the birds getting out to this early-ish lead isn't terribly concerning when we remember that we need them to keep the adventure in check first of all but second of all they have a weak decree and so yeah at, at a certain point we can false order some birds from that top clearing into 
our base so that if they want to come move in, at least they'll be giving us outrage twice instead of once. That would be good. Uh, this is tough. I wish I had a mouse supporter and then I could revolt in that mouse clearing. Yeah, I might mobilize. No, because if I mobilize Eerie Emigre, I could go for that revolt as well. Yeah. And then they'd probably be more likely to remove the one in the top mouse clearing, or the middle mouse clearing, I guess, because they have more warriors there. It is pretty likely. Well, actually, they have to consider ambushes as well, right? Unless they have an ambush in their hand, there's a chance that we have an ambush in ours, and then they'd lose their Salmo for trying to battle this sympathy token. And that would be pretty bad for the cats. Pretty, pretty bad. Oh, we've got a message here. I don't suppose you're willing to reveal if you're a vault or not in that bottom mouse clearing. I will say I do not have the supporters to do so this turn. Yep, no problem. No problem. Don't worry about that. Sympathy. We'll go ahead and craft the Master Engravers with it. And you know I have Master Engravers, so he probably won't let me, but I think I gotta at least try, right? I think I think my play on my turn is revolt. Um reinforce that base and then organize in the hope that I'll be able to craft Eerie Emigre on the following turn. And then with my three warriors that I'll have in that bottom clearing with the base, I will go ahead and, hmm, I could move three into the clearing with the sawmill and then move another time to organize and then recruit back at the base. But at that point I'd have, I wouldn't have many in the supply left and those two just sitting out there would become more of a liability than anything. Ah. <sighs> Hopefully I can draw a good card like Propaganda Bureau or something because cause I'm not feeling too good about my chances right now, unfortunately. Okay, going to repair a few items. Yep, explore the ruins. I wonder why they didn't just do that last turn. What did they even do on their last turn? I don't remember. And they get the sword now, okay. Um, what did they do on their turn? They repaired, repaired, repaired. Oh, they repaired twice and then aided for a boot. But they didn't aid for two points, right? So that's good. Like that. They're going to repair... Okay, so they're scoring pretty slowly because they've been taking some damage. I imagine they're going to get out of the Eerie's threat range, right? If they go to a clearing the Eerie can't build in, it's unlikely that the Eerie will be able to get to them with enough warriors to both build and battle them in that clearing that they're running to if they go to one of the clearings with four cats, that is, yeah. So that effectively makes them safe from the Eerie on this turn, I think. Oh no! I guess it, I guess they could leave one of their that top fox roost vulnerable in order to go battle them, if they if they wanted to. Okay, they're retaking that move. Keep is vulnerable, but they're gonna go hide there. Yeah. It's a it's a nice play. The birds actually might be eyeing up that keep at this point because it's not reinforced at, at all. There's only the one cat. If they add a card to battle and they recruit those those birds in in that uh, lower rabbit clearing that they control, they'd be able to, uh, that they rule, they'd be able to move in there, and most likely, even with field hospitals and two battles, they'd get both of the tokens, and that's an easy four points. Okay, they're going to aid the cats now. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Gosh, they have so many items already. Alright. Um, 
Yeah, so I think my turn is just revolt. Get more cards in my hand for more supporters. Um, should have just done that last turn. It's okay though, because it's not ideal. So I wanted to keep the uh, the options open, right? And now I, I know, by the way, that uh, the cats asked whether or not I was willing to revolt. That they are likely going to destroy sympathy in these mouse clearings. Although I can note to them that I only have one supporter before they before they do. So um, I'll go ahead and organize this one, and I'll go ahead and recruit at my base. Um, but I think I'll move this one up into Erie territory just to get another, um, or I could, hmm, I could reinforce both. No, I think that would probably be risky to reinforce both, um, mouse sympathy. I think I just need to appeal to the fact that I am not threatening the cats at this point. Um... I only have the one supporter, so I'm not really a threat to them. I think I'll move in here. I think we'll call that a turn. One, two, three cards. Ooh, Charm Offensive is nice. Man, I can just keep getting cards and keep funneling them into uh, supporters here. Okay. This could be doable, especially if we're able to get that Master Engravers crafted. Not all hope is lost. Four cards per turn is really nice for us. Just uh, a matter of who to give the points to. At this juncture, it's looking like it'll be cats. They're running out of building space. I may have just opened the door for them to come build over top of me with those four cats, but um, I have false orders, so it's it's not the biggest deal. And all the organization for next to my bases is already done, like I can't do anymore. Um, I'm sort of pigeonholed here, I'm going to need to get most of my, my points scored through spreading now, which is going to be really difficult to do. Um, so, you know, hopefully the, the four cards per turn sort of offsets that a little bit. And now I think having any more than three officers, like, it's not even going to be that efficient for me unless I draw Corvid planners because I just don't have anywhere to, to organize easily. I might want to get my, my warriors through that bottom mouse while there's still one warrior in it, but that other than that, like, that's it. So, we'll see. But yeah, not, not, not ideal at all. Bird's going to be doing lots of recruiting now. They still only have one mouse roost. That's still their weak point. So I think at a certain point I'm going to have to come try and destroy that if the adventurer isn't uh, going to be making themselves more threatening in terms of their battle capabilities. Mm -mm -mm. No, no, no. I'll have to organize that. Uh, well, I don't want to organize it and just give them free two points, right? So they're already in the lead. So if they want to keep using their battles to try and get rid of that, I'm fine to do that. Um, the odds that at least one zero is rolled are fairly high, so if they if it if they want to keep using the battles there, that's uh, fine by me. Because at this point in the game, my evening actions aren't super valuable to me anyway, unless, like I said, I draw corvid planners. Um, so I'm I'm fine with that. Um, if they, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything, I don't want to make them suspicious or, like, remind them of the fact that I have Master Engravers by making a comment. If they ask again if I'm gonna revolt, I'll just say I only have one supporter. 
Um, but hopefully they, they see one supporter and they say, okay, I'm safe, and they just don't touch me this turn, which would be nice. It would be very nice. No, no, I need that. Oh, oh, that stinks. Oh, no. Oh, and I got garbage in return. Oh, they're going to craft that immediately. Man, I needed that. <laughs> 12 points already for Erie. Yeah, this is getting a little little scary. I'm thinking I'm thinking I might false orders Erie this turn. And just go get their mouse roost and turmoil them. Right? Because they've already shown they're willing to battle my one warrior there. I can move my two up and make it three. I I can train with that fox card for it now. Hmm, the problem is if I do turmoil, then it's going to be difficult to ask that they battle um, Adventurer. But Adventurer, at this point, granted, they haven't scored that many points, so maybe it's just more concern. Maybe the Eerie are just the more concerning faction at this point. I'm surprised Adventurer hasn't done any more quests. They did a quest on the first turn. I thought they were going to keep questing. And if they had done a quest every turn at this point, and then making use of their hammer to just repair those items they damaged questing, I guess they probably would have been if the Eerie hadn't smacked them up a few times. So it's good that the Eerie have been doing that. Uh, I got to I gotta reset up my... My capture software because it used to just capture the game itself. I don't know why it's just capturing the screen this time, and I'm getting like notifications on the screen and stuff during the game. I'll have to to set that up and figure that out for my next video. We've got a wow. That's a lot of battles against the birds. Just finished. Yeah, but now nah, now the birds get to uh, to rebuild in that clearing, right? So. It might not actually be that useful. Well, they'd probably just move through and come here. Probably destroy my sympathy and build. They might still do that. Um, we'll see. They don't have the moves though, right? They only have one. Yeah, they probably don't do that then. Okay, um, at this point I think I'm probably safely crafting Master Engravers. And then immediately crossbow for two points. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We haven't seen any ambushes. So, like, the odds that the Eerie... Oh, we have seen one bird ambush, I guess, was used for Hawks for Hire. Um, so, the odds that the Eerie have an ambush... Here's some questing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the odds that the Eerie have one are pretty high. So, because of that, I... Th I think I should probably hold off one turn. Uh, it's tough. It's real tough. Real, real tough. Okay, so did I miss anything else? They repaired. They did a quest. Yeah, that's all they did. Okay. No T yet. I really don't want to take your building, so it was better to destroy that roost. Well... Maybe not, because it extends the time. Well, actually, if they get one more turn and then they turmoil, I think that makes it even harder for them to rebuild than if they had turmoiled this turn. Because they'll be getting four points, maybe a little bit more, if they craft or get some cardboard. Okay, so I'm just going to immediately rip the Master Engravers. And then immediately after that, the crossbow for two points. Um, I don't see any, haven't seen any saboteurs. Well, I had a saboteurs, and it's in my supporters. 
or was in my supporters. Um, I haven't seen any other ones though. <sighs> okay, so I want to mobilize this. I'm not sure. Do I? I, I don't feel like training an officer is very valuable to me right now. I don't like know what I'm gonna do with them even. Um. So I think I just. I'm just gonna start mobilizing a bunch. Not usually a strategy I go with as the Alliance, so I'm curious to see where it goes from here. Um, so I can move, like, even if I move battled, yeah, I'd need to roll a three, right? Because I'd want to be able to reinforce this base afterwards, right? So, yeah, it's a little tricky. Um, I think I just recruit twice. I think I probably recruit twice and move once is my play here. Mm, I think I recruit, recruit, and then, hmm, I could defend this sympathy in case I want to do a final turn revolt and get two points, uh, but I'm not sure how valuable that would be for me. Um, I could I could revolt next turn. It would just be hard to defend all of it. And then the other option would be moving through and trying to battle those sawmills away, but I'd give up my base to do so with my current office, not officer count, my current yeah my current officer count. I wouldn't be able to get back and defend the base so. It's a little tricky. I'm thinking, though, I definitely can't organize. So I'm thinking my move will just be one. Ah, this is tough. This is tough. Or maybe I can't afford to. Maybe I can't afford to organize because the plan is going to be to turmoil them after this. And I want, and I need another, if I'm going to do that, I need another warrior to train with so yeah I think that should be the play from me woohoo root T gonna hold off on crafting that for sure until the later part of the game adventurer has become less and less of a threat as they've uh, they scored so many points on the first turn and then just hasn't scored much haven't scored much since um, and if I want to craft that sword, I'm going to need to get another fox sympathy, so that's something to keep note of. I could actually do that next turn. Um, so we'll see. I think I want to craft saboteurs just to defend my master engravers. And then if I see any other saboteurs, I will saboteur their saboteurs, and then I will go about my crafting. Um, oh, I just realized cats are going to swap meet me again. So there's a good chance they take... Like, I wouldn't want them to take any of these cards, to be honest. If they take the sword, they might give it back. The other ones they probably keep, because I've just realized they have a mouse workshop. Um, yeah, so I don't want them to swap meet me. Oh, and they are going through anyway, so... Or maybe that's just the build? No, they are going through, yeah. Ooh, they gave up an ambush to do that, though. Hmm, now they have eight, and they're going to get a second risk. Ah, I should have went for it last turn. I should have went for the turmoil last turn. Oh. It could still be doable. Hold, it could still be doable. Oh gosh, this would be... Oh no, because I wouldn't be able to reinforce that base if I did revolt there. But, but would it really be so bad, right? This is such a weird game, because if I... What happens when I, when I lose a base? I lose half my officers, which would be... I'd go from the three I currently have down to two because I'd gain one for half of four is two. 
so I'd lose two officers and I'd lose all supporters matching my base. If I expect to lose the base, I just go ahead and don't give myself any mouse or bird supporters this turn, which I wasn't planning on doing anyway. And then I go after, huh, I, this could be doable. Let's see what the chat's saying though. I'll craft tea if you destroy that abandoned roost. Hmm. Huh. Could be a good deal for both parties. That means I'll definitely craft my tea this turn. Because at that point, the damage is already done. You know? And I can, I can also use, instead of revolting, I can use two supporters to get a fox and blue here and then craft fox folk steel so I'd be having a very profitable turn I probably I'd probably prefer it to be in Texas actually since that doesn't have martial law at the moment somehow <laughs> I don't think you really need a third base better use those supporters to spread sympathy <laughs> I usually don't go for a third base, I agree. Usually. But, this is a point in the game where the birds have gotten a little scarier. And so I'm not necessarily sure I agree with that anymore. I just relayed those messages to them via Discord. Um, I guess they didn't go ahead and craft it. Ah, the birds have a tea as well, so yeah, I should probably craft my tea then. Okay, looks like the uh, birds are going to be losing this roost here for sure. Might also be losing. No, okay, they're going to reinforce Texas. Yeah, that's a good play. Hmm. The other issue with me revolting is it gives cats more space to build. They already have plenty of it, though, so. Well, not, I guess I wouldn't say plenty. They have a good amount of it, though, so. And they've got their rabbit partisans, right? Interesting, so now they can only... Oh, they did have a mouse ambush. But I don't think I really need to go after them now. Cats are sort of doing it for me. They're cutting down their scoring. Doing that work for me. Part of me thinks this turn is one turn too soon to pull the trigger on any... Um, any crafting of swords and teas for the Vagabond. Um, very lucky swap me. What did you swap? Whoa. Okay, it looks like the, the card names are sort of... It probably was the bird, huh? Let's see if the Vagabond crafts themselves anything this turn. Oh, what are they doing over here? Are they crafting a T per chance? No, they're going to aid me. Okay. Birds are still a bit threatening. They're going to get at least three points on their turn. Oh. What did I craft? Ah, oh, the crossbow, right? Hey, don't don't use that to crossbow me right now. That would kind of ruin my whole plan that I had set up. I'd appreciate it if you didn't do that. I have a feeling birds are going to go roll in and take all this cardboard, though. Maybe I should try and do it first? Is there a way I can do it? Ah, uh, no, I can't rule with... I need five warriors. I could false order birds out and then go in and do it. Mm. 
Oh, they're going to get to it first, I think. They're going to get the two wood. Yeah. Even with one sword, this is a this is a free four points for them. Eh. Yep, that's a shame. On the bright side, though, I keep my sympathy, which means my game plan is intact. And they actually didn't end up reinforcing Texas for martial law, so... Whoa, four... I, what? Oh, they exhausted their bag to aid? Oh, no. Oh, no. Despot still gets easy points and will almost certainly take them. I should prob still do it. So what I can do is spread sympathy into Texas, then false order the birds into Texas. Oh, right. They have recruit in rabbit. Never mind. Although, hmm. Okay, so this raises an interesting question. Vagabond is down to six items. Cats are not scoring terribly quickly, but they now have an open board in which to build. Are cats the number one threat? I think so, because if the bird's turmoil and the vagabond only has... Huh. I think that does make you the main threat now, though. With birds having to reset their decree. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I don't think I revolt. I think I always spread to Texas. And now this is where the questions come in. Oh, I can get an additional spread up into this rabbit clearing. And I think I'll take that, right? Because, like, why not? So I'd have to move, move, battle and then reinforce the base. I don't think I can do that. And so, what I could do instead is move the one cat into Texas. I could move the one cat into Texas, get outrage, then I move one warrior into that clearing to destroy a sawmill plus a piece of wood. Or I move three in to guarantee that the ambush doesn't take them out. Then I can move them back. Problem is if they do have an ambush, I'm in a bit of trouble. Um, so we know that the, oh, the deck got reshuffled. When did the deck get reshuffled? Deck. This run of cards have been reshuffled right before the Marquise drew. Okay. Um, then I think at this point my best bet is to just start racing against the guys. And, like, the cats are going to have to reinforce, spend at least some of their turn reinforcing so that the adventurer doesn't get that free cardboard, right? So I think my best play is to just put my head down and start crafting like crazy. So I've got the sympathy to craft... Root T and bag, sword and saboteurs. I can craft literally my entire hand this turn. Um, the question is, do I really want to do that? I don't think I want to craft sword this turn. Is 
is what I've landed on. I think giving the adventurer two swords might make them a little too dangerous. 13 points and whatnot. I'll definitely craft this bag. Let's do that. It's the last one in the supply. The other ones are both in their respective supplies. And I'll definitely craft saboteurs. I think crafting the other ones would come back to haunt me. That's six points though. I think the adventurer would go too crazy with them. I think I have to make peace with the fact that one of them is probably getting removed. Um, do I just go ahead and go for this battling though? Or do I not? I think I can move to battle once and then recruit. No, I'll go ahead and move uh, uh, no, 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 I don't want to do that. I'll go, I'll go ahead and move one here. I'll move, I'll organize. Oh gosh, it's going to be close. Organize it. Come on, come on, come on. And recruit here, recruit here, recruit here. Ah. Whew. Okay, oh. now I have a pretty bulky hand so that if the if the cats were to swap meet me, there's at least a decent chance I can craft my items on my next turn. At this point, I'd say well, it didn't be danger than me. I'm pretty well set up to fail. It's like on me and what, yep, 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 yep. Oh, I meant with regards to me. For me, you'd be biggest threat. Fair to say I'm a threat at well at this stage. Yeah, no, definitely fair. Um, this game has gone pretty well now. Um, I will say I can't organize. Actually, no, I, I won't say that because maybe they destroy my sympathy and then I will be able to organize. So, <laughs> never mind. Not going to say that. Yeah. I'm definitely a threat, but my base placement makes me a little less threatening, which is good. Um, so they're going to go ahead and get the rest of their birds out on the board that they can before turmoiling, which is going to be nice for me, obviously. Cats are going to have to reinforce those sawmills and pretty much any carpet they can. Can't leave anything defended with one warrior anymore because they gave, I gave Adventure a crossbow, which I think is actually going to work out better for me in the long run. Yeah, you were in a tough spot, though. Did that just... <laughs> the terminal animation, like, cut me out of typing. Okay, goodbye, despot. They now have to choose a new leader, so... Vagabond is going to farm you for points if they're able to craft themselves a sword, so... And I'm holding two of the three in my hand. So the odds they have a sword to craft, pretty low. Right there with ya. Love the cats, though, for stuff like that. Tough decision making with the cats is great. Uh-oh. Disconnect. Um, hopefully they wanted charismatic. Oh, maybe they made that choice. Did you get to pick 
leader. No, they took my tea. Ah, oh, jeez. Ah, oh, jeez. I needed that tea. I should have just crafted it for points. What am I doing? And now if they take that fox sympathy, I have no points from spreading. Oh, I was too conservative. I was too conservative. Ah, they're crafting all the items that I want to craft. They're going to craft the other tea, so I just need to hope I draw into coins at this point. Okay, the AI did choose Charismatic for them. Did choose Charismatic for them. Lucky that that happened, I guess. Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Do I try and orchestrate my own revolt? Are they not going to reinforce this wood and all? Yeah, they are. Good, good. Can't be giving those points to the Vagabond. Not for free. Hmm. Uh, that probably just gives those... Well, they're going to use the wood to build, I'd imagine. Oh? Okay. Interesting. And where are they building? Right. Makes sense. And that's four points. Yeah, I think I am going to have to go after the cats. And Unfortunately, I think it's too late to do so. Hopefully the birds can do it for me. Because I don't think, don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Outside of just revolting on one sawmill. Which isn't a huge deal at this point. Because I believe they're at... Yeah, so this... Sawmill, if I recall correctly, is three wood for four points. Yeah. That's a bad one to let them build again. They're undoing, though. So maybe they've changed their mind. Okay, still defending that wood, this time with just an extra warrior. And we're defending that other wood as well. Just going to seed that uh, recruiter in Texas to the Erie there. So I think it's pretty safe to say. So I know cats have a T in hand. Cats did swap me a T from me. So if that mouse workshop stands they get another two points just gonna throw that out there see if the birds uh care to act on it i might have to try and do something about it myself at this point we'll see oh no he just vagabond just crossbows here again and takes out two wood i didn't even realize that this one was only defended with one cat so that's another four points there. Uh, this is getting to be a real close game. And they can aid me pretty much anywhere for... Huh. Uh, now I'm concerned that if I craft a second sword, I'm going to be giving them the game. How many boots do they have? Just one? Okay. We'll have to see if they craft anything for themselves here. They're going to aid for the... The T first... Are they going to aid again and get the... Oh, they're already hostile with them? Oh, because they used crossbow. Right. I was thinking that was defenseless. No, because they're going to crossbow again. I just said they were going to use crossbow again. 
Not for the first time. Now I wish I had crafted that sword so I could maybe convince Vagabond to try and go take it out, but with one sword they can't. With one sword they cannot. False orders them out. They took the boot as well. Okay. They're not getting any points from that aid itself. So I think that might be too late in the game for them to get this T to, to really turn it around. Man, we just got lucky they didn't draw T. Do you have the cards to make it there? Battle. Oh, right, you. Forgot about boat builders. Then I think I will false order cats out of there. I think that would be good for me if I, I'd get some outrage out of it and I'd hopefully the birds will be able to destroy that workshop for me. At this point I think I should just saboteur swap meet. There haven't been any sabos played at this point, nothing's getting sabotored on my end so I'll just get rid of the swap meet. Yeah, I only get one battle, so. Oh. Never mind. I guess they're adding a bird to battle. Or maybe they'll add a second card to battle. They'll do mouse. Maybe they have two mouse cards. We'll see what they say. Oh, Vagon just aided them for a card. Nice. Alright. Crafted cards? Yeah. I'm going to saboteur cats. I'm going to saboteur their swap meet. I don't want them to steal any more cards from me. No thanks. All right, so where now the question becomes where I false order them to. I think it's this rabbit base because this one more readily. Like I feel like the birds are more likely to destroy this sympathy. So although there is that, hmm, there is that nice cardboard I could go after myself here, and I think I might have to. Cause I don't care if I lose my base at this point. I have no supporters. Where do I false order them to? I think I move them to the bottom. Ah, oh, but if I uh, am I gonna go battle that? Leaves my base wide open. The question is, do I think I can win in two turns if I if I don't do that? Right, I don't get to spread this turn. I get three points from a sword. I'd have to go for three points from battling there. I can get three more points from a sword. It's tough. It's tough. I think I'll have to train an officer and go from there. So let's just do this. And on. We're just going to roll with it. And yeah, this way if my rabbit base gets destroyed, I also don't lose a rabbit supporter. I think that's my best plan at this point. Get a fox card into my supporters here. We'll go to spread sympathy, or we'll skip spread sympathy, I mean. Go ahead and train another officer. We will go ahead and craft. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> um, I think I'll craft the... Does it matter which suit I craft? I'm not going to mobilize either of them, I'm going to hold them. I think I'll craft the... Does it matter? There's no, like, Lost Souls being influenced here. Am I going to need suits on my next turn? Potentially to train, but I could use either of them for that. If it gets swap met, it's more likely the cats give me back the suited one. So I'll craft the bird.
Then I'll mobilize the dominance card. Then I won't mobilize swap me because I'm I think I'm just planning on losing this base, right? And if I'm operating on the assumption that I need to win on my next turn, it's better just to have it crafted than to put it in supporters, right? Probably. Oh, this is tough. I don't even know. I don't even know. Ah. Uh, I should either craft it or mobilize it, right? And there's a chance I get to come back to that base and defend it. So I'm going to gonna mobilize and then we'll go to evening and we'll just see what happens here ah there's the ambush They let me do it? Oh, wow. I did not expect that. And I have two more, so I'll go ahead and battle and then... Oh, but now they just ambush me here. I have one more action, so I can move... Um, to defend from my fox base down to the... Nope, they're just going to let it happen. I will take that every day of the week. And then with the extra officer, I just retreat back to my base here and defend. Woo -hoo. I feel like I got away with murder there. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it's 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 curious to see if um they said they'd do it, but I don't know if they're gonna stick to it now, right? I guess they should because cats with they can score four from sawmill, two from T, that's six. And how much wood do they have? They'll have one, two, three, four plus one is five. They only need three for that. And then they could use the other two on a workshop, so that's six points plus two, and then they just need one somebody. Yeah, they'd, they'd win, so. And, like, with my current supporter loadout, I can't even spread once. I can revolt in mouse, though, for a point if I need to. The board's going to change a lot before my next turn, though, so. And I get this outrage as well, which is really nice. So we do know that they have this ambush. I think they were holding it to use here. Unfortunately, I should have said they should bring five. But they saw the considering options prompt, so they know there's an ambush. And they keep the workshop here. So I think they win, unfortunately. What was the actual roll? Oh, it's so it didn't matter. They only rolled a two anyway. I think cats probably win with that T. But we will see. Because their woods all connected. They've got two building slots. They get a sawmill. They get a workshop and a T. That's nine points in a. I think that's a GG. Sawmill workshop, yeah. That's a good game. Well played overall. So I guess I guess the only the only different play I could have made would be not destroying that sawmill. Because then they wouldn't have had the wood to rebuild it. But I wouldn't have had the ability to win on my next turn, right? So, uh, but 
Hmm. I should have taken the three points, left the sawmill, retreated. I didn't really think about it because of the timer. But if I had left the sawmill, they wouldn't have been able to build. They would have been forced to overwork. Well played, though. Yeah. Timer had me rushed in hindsight. Should have left that sawmill there. Well, it was very well played. It was a good game. I'll see you in the next one.